Welcome to my channel. This video is about borderline personality disorder, BPD for short. Personality disorders are a way of thinking, feeling, and behaving that deviates from social norms. It is generally unhealthy, inflexible thoughts, patterns, and maladaptive behaviors that cause friction with relationships to family, friends, or coworkers. The personality has to be pervasive and causing serious social and professional impairment. Personality disorders aren't mental illnesses. They are generally treated with group or individual therapy. Dialectical behavior therapy is the most successful for BPD. Medications generally don't work for personality disorders and they don't go away. But with BPD, normal functioning tends to increase with age, starting in their 30s and usually significantly increasing as far as normal functioning is concerned in their 40s and 50s. People can live a normal life if their behavior doesn't manifest in an unhealthy way. BPD is a cluster B personality disorder. The criteria for diagnosis is a pervasive pattern of instability in interpersonal relationships, self-image, and emotions, as well as a marked impulsivity beginning by early adulthood and present in a variety of contexts as indicated by five or more of the following. Number one, frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. Number two, a pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships characterized by alternating between extremes of ideation and devaluation. The pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships characterized by Characterized by extremes between the ideation and devaluation is known as splitting, and it is a key characteristic of bipolar disorder. Number three is identity disturbance with markedly or persistently unstable self-image or sense of self. They may change their style, way of being, hairstyle, hair color, ideas, or beliefs because they lack true sense of self. Number four impulsivity in at least two areas that are potentially self-damaging. Examples would be spending excessively, sexual promiscuity, binge eating, substance abuse, gambling, reckless driving, just anything that is tends to be self-damaging, self-destructive. And usually these particular behaviors are triggered by a feeling of abandonment, real or imagined, rejection or failures. They tend to keep engaging in these self-destructive behaviors despite the consequences and how much is hurting them and their lives. Number five is recurrent suicidal behaviors, gestures, or threats, or self-harming behaviors such as cutting. So they may be a persistent cutter, uh, or they may have a high rate of um, threatening to kill themselves. Now, a person that has borderline personality disorder or people that have borderline personality disorder tend to have a higher rate of suicide attempts. And if it's coupled with substance abuse, this can lead to a higher rate of successful suicides. So sometimes they, they really do want to kill themselves, but then there's times where it's just a cry for help. And with the substance abuse, they may actually be successful in killing themselves, even though they didn't want to at that particular time. Number six is affective instability due to a marked reactivity of mood. An example of this would be intense episodic dysphoria, irritability, or anxiety usually lasting a few hours, but no more than a few days. So this emotional instability tends to be a day-to-day -day event and is different from bipolar disorder because the shift is shorter. For a bipolar disorder, the duration of the fluctuation should persist for at least four days to meet the hypomanic episode and seven days for the manic episode. So their hyperreactivity tends to be overly intense compared to the circumstance, but generally it is short term as far as within a couple of days. Number seven is chronic feelings of emptiness. So they tend to feel very empty and fill this with self-destructive behaviors. Number eight is inappropriate intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. And this would be an example of frequent displays of uh, temper, constantly getting angry, recurrent physical fights, 
they may like scream, yell, or show a very intense anger for little to nothing. And it could be something as simple as not noticing their hairstyle is different or just something really minute or mundane. This behavior does overlap with histrionic personality disorder, except with BPD, their emotions are real and intense, whereas with HPD, it's not. People with HPD react as if they feel the emotion, but they don't. They're just doing it so they can gain attention. Nine is transient stress-related paranoid ideation or severe disassociative. Now, they may disassociate into what seems like a child, or they may hear voices, this usually occurs in an extremely stressful time for them. So they may dissociate and just completely change into something else. The predominant characteristic of BPD are emotional instability and lack of impulse control. Outbursts of violence or threatening behavior are common and usually following a real or perceived abandonment. Now, BPD is about 1-6% to 6 of the population, and the majority are usually women, which is a 3 to 1 ratio. Women with BPD are more likely to have co-occurring disorders such as major depression, anxiety disorder, substance abuse, or eating disorders. And men, BPD is more likely to accompany substance abuse or antisocial personality disorder. BPD can be co-occurring with bipolar disorder, which is more challenging to treat. And since BPD is often co-occurring with other disorders, illnesses, or substance abuse, they are often misdiagnosed. Treatment is effective with BPD and or with people who have BPD, and they can and do improve, especially with time and age. So 75% can regain normal functioning in their 30s, and by their 50s, 90% have returned to normal functioning. So borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder, there was a time when people said, okay, these are the same things and we should take out HPD. And with the DSM-5, it just was not taken out. But pre while they have a lot of the same the same things going on with them, the same criteria, such as the rapidly shifting emotions, the unstable relationship with family, their emotions um, shifting and reacting impulsively or not really having a true sense of self, the reasons behind it is different. For borderline personality disorder, it's usually because they feel like they're being abandoned and they're reacting to that. They're trying to do whatever they can and because they are really distraught over this possible abandonment that they're feeling. And sometimes their behavior and how they're reacting can actually cause the other person to want to run away. Even if that person wanted to possibly leave, is definitely pushing them even further and making them think, oh, this is, yeah, I definitely need to get out of this. Whereas HPD does a lot of these things in order to gain attention. They don't actually feel these strong emotions. They just want to be seen because they feel a lot of discomfort by not being the center of attention. Now, remember that with personality disorders, these tend to be consistent across time, places, and they don't generally change in circumstances, but with, with borderline personality disorder, it does generally improve with age. So that one is a little different because they are improving. They're not staying this way forever, and the majority will be high-functioning or at least for the most part, normal by the time they hit their 50s. Now, with borderline personality disorder, they have a tendency to co-occur very often with major depressive disorder, approximately 60%. Um, dysthymia, which is a chronic type of depression as well, uh, this generally occurs with them about 70%. Substance abuse tends to be 35%. Eating disorders, 25%. Bipolar disorder, 15%. Antisocial -pers anti personality disorder, 25%. Narcissistic personality disorder, 25%. And self-injury is approximately 55 to 85% of these individuals. So I'm giving you these little stats really quickly so you have an idea of what I'm referring to when I say, okay, it is, is definitely co-occurring with people. And that's why sometimes it's challenging to find out that someone has BPD because they may have all these other issues and they're treating them, but they're not really treating their their fear of abandonment, which again may continue throughout their, their life, but hopefully not forever because 
they do get better. But okay, that's it for borderline personality disorder. I hope you were able to gain something important or something new that you didn't hear before. Hopefully this was very helpful to you. If you like the video, go ahead and like and subscribe and leave your comments down below. If you have any ideas that you want me to cover, go ahead and let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.